so much for asking. Usually I uh, work radio, so I don't memorize a lot of things, so I wrote down an introduction. And when Barry Lee first came to me with this project, I was giddy with excitement and agreement. I said, yes, yes, a Beatles tributary, a fistful of splendids, yes. Then he said, and you will read from Spaniard in the Works, which took me aback because, well, I am neither Spaniard nor do I work. <laughs> However, I am willing to take on John Lennon's prose and beat it soundly. Tonight, you will hear it beg for mercy. And while I do it, excuse my splashing about in a liver puddling accident, but uh, this Midwest twang I have it doesn't lend itself very well to malapropisms and whimsical wordplay. So, from Spaniard in the works, Snow Life and some several dwarfs. Once upon a pond in a Disney far away, say 300 years ago, if you like, there lived in a sneaky forest some several dwarfs or cretins, all named Sleazy, Grumpy, Sneaky, Dog, Smirky, Alice, Derek, and Wimpy. Anyway, they all dug about in a diamond mine which was rich beyond compare. Every day when they came home from work, they would sing a song just like ordinary workers. The song went something like, yo-ho, yo-ho, it's off to work we go, which is silly really, considerable they were coming home. Perhaps there was slight housework to do. <laughs> One day, however, they, dwarfs, arrived home at a Protestant six o'clock, and who, who do they find but only Snow Wife asleep in Grumpy's bed. He didn't seem to mind. Somebody's been feeding my porridge, screams Wimpy, who was wearing a light blue pullover. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a grand castle not so a mile away, a woman is looking in her daily mirror, shouting, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairy in the land? Which doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> Cassandra answers the mirror. Cherish a Mary, shudders the woman, who appears to be a queen, or a witch, or an acorn. She's talking to that mirror again, Father, says Miss Craddock. I've just seen her talking to that mirror again. Father Craddock turns round slowly from the book he is eating and explains that it is just a face she is going through, and they're all the same at that age. Well, I don't like it one tick, continues Miss Craddock. Father Craddock turns around slowly from the book he is eating, explaining that she doesn't have to like it, and promptly sets fire to his elephant. Sick to death of this elephant I am, he growls. Sick to death of eating it like an elephant all over the place. Suddenly, bark at the several dwarves home. Snow White has become a firm favorite, especially with her helping arm, brushing away the little droppings. Good old Snow White, the all sage. Good old Snow White is our favorite. And I like you too, rejoices Snow White. I like you all, my little dwarves. Without warping, they hear a soddy voice continually con, shouting and screeching about apples for sale. New apples for old, says the above hearing voice. Try these nice new apples, for Christ's sake. Grumpy turnips quick and answers, shouting, why? And they all look at him. A few daisy lately, the same voice comes hooting a boom the apples for sale with a rather more firm approach, saying, These apples are definitely for sale! Snow White, who by this time is currently aroused, stick her hands through the window. Anyway, she bought one, which didn't help the trade gap at all. Little diggery-doo that it was, parsoned with deathly arsenicas. The woman, who was the wicked queen in disgust, cackled away to our castle in the hills, laughing fit to bust. Anyway, the handsome prince, who was really Mist Craddock, found out and promptly ate the wicked queen and smashed up the mirror. After he had done this, he journeyed to the house of the several dwarfs and began to live with them. He refused to marry Snow White on account of his health, what with her being poisoned and that. And they came to an agreement, much to the disgust of sleepy, grumpy, sneaky, dog, smirky, Alice, Derek, and Wimpy. The dwarves clubbed together and didn't buy a new mirror, but always sang a happy song. They lived 
happily ever orator until they died, which somebody of them did naturally enough. <laughs>